Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So in 1983, Caption Center, right? They have developed a program called the DSSP, right? This is Dictionary of Secondary Structure of Proteins. This is they called as DSSP to analyze the known 3D structures. Okay, they are not doing any prediction. They are taking the real structures from the protein data bank, and they estimate they they just check the head and winding pattern, and then they have the phi C angles. From these patterns, they assigned each residue to several, several eight different secondary structures. Right, three different types of helices. Right, what are three different helices we discussed? Three ten ten. Alpha helix, three ten helix, and five helix, and two types of strands. Right, and the bridge, and one uh, bent, and one turn. Right, and one coil, only irregular. So they make eight different categories of secondary structures. So here, this is the output of the DSSP. Okay, this output of DSSP. Here they give the chain information. This is the chain information, and here this is the amino acid sequence, and this is the second structure assignment. And here they have these head and winding patterns. If it is the residues number, they put two, four, one, minus one. That means plus one means the forward direction, and the minus one with the uh, reverse direction. They put which residues are had in bonded with respect to this particular residue, right? And they give some energy values also. This is what they give the energy values. Then finally, here they get the phi values. This is phi. This is psi, right? You can see the almost the residues are within that range, right? If you see this range, right? And here, if you see the map. Okay, here this is the range, right? So this is the angle, right? So you can see the values are within that particular particular range. So you can see this is the from from the alpha helix. So now the question is, if you have this primary sequence, right? DSSP can assign the values if the three D structures are known, right? This is one example for the uh, myoglobin. First line it shows the sequence. And second second line shows the secondary structure. If the structures are not known, for example, this is for example we give the sequence. Is it possible to predict the secondary structure from this sequence? From this sequence, why there are alpha helices, right? This alpha helix. Why we can form the beta beta strand? So there are various methods because once we have the data, the sequence and the structures. Then they can compare the results, right? Sequences and the structures, and based on the information, you can derive some methods to predict the secondary structures, and you can evaluate because uh, there are some experimental known data are available, so you can also evaluate. So there are various methods which have been proposed for predicting the secondary structures of proteins. The first one is the based on statistical analysis. This is the simplest one. For example, alanine prefers to be an alpha helix. Then if you see few alanines, then we see that okay. This segment prefers to be an alpha helix, right? For example, if you see the students, they will come at nine o'clock, they go somewhere, ten o'clock come to the lab, right? And one o'clock go to lunch. Then if you see his behavior, where he will be? For example, ten o'clock, okay, he will be in the lab. It's one o'clock, he will be in the lunch, right? Likewise, if some residues they prefer to be accommodated in any specific secondary structures, then we can see that okay, these residues are highly populated. So this segment forms an alpha helix. Right? This is the called a statistical analysis. So one first man, they they analyzed the data of the then known proteins, all, all the known proteins available at that time, 1974, and they developed the propensity values for all the 20 residues. Based on that, they classified the residues into few groups. Which residues form prefer to form alpha helix? Which residues they don't? Prefer to be an alpha helix, right? Some of them, which are indifferent, may or may not form, right? Likewise for the beta sheets. Then after this information, this you can get achieve an accuracy of about 55 to 60 percent. Sometimes same residues they can adopt alpha helices and beta sheets, right? The prediction method can predict either helix or strand. If they prefer same segment into two different secondary structures, then one will be correct, one will be wrong. In this case, 
Garnier's group, right, they developed a method called GOR based on information theory. Here they did not consider only a central residue, they made a window, window of 17 residues, right, 8 residues at the left side and 8 residues on the right side, right, and get the information for all the residues. That means any segment, they have different secondary structures, it based on the neighboring residues. So, you can discriminate if the same segment belongs to helix and belongs to alpha beta sheet depending upon the neighbors. So, they use that in, in that information to predict the secondary structures. Later on, they try to use various properties. One of the most prominent properties is the hydrophobicity because it can easily distinguish the residues based on polar, non polar, charged, and all. So, they try to see the periodicity of these residues. They take the sequence and find are there any periodicity of residues in the sequence. Right. If you look into the sequence, difficult to find. So, if we have a kind of figures, kind of profiles, easily you can see. Right. What is hydrophobicity profile? Sequence versus it is a plot connecting sequence versus values. Right. So, we discussed about several patterns right, for alpha helix, for the strand, for the transform regions. So, they have some specific patterns and if you scan these patterns in these profiles right and then you can easily identify the secondary structures. Then after that they try to input the multiple sequence alignment. So, right the time grows they think the single sequence it will be difficult to predict the secondary structure. If you have more number of sequences of known information then you gather the information from that sequence alignment and you can try to use for prediction. So, earlier we discussed about multiple sequence alignment. How many residues are required for the multiple sequence alignment? Three or more, three or more sequences. If you want to see any residues are conserved, how many sequences will can give the reliable results? Uh, 100. Yeah, if it is more than 100, right, at least we need 50. If it is more than 100, then you can get reliable results. So, in this case, they try to gather the information for different sequences and make the alignment, and from this alignment, they try to predict the secondary structures, right. For example, question number 5 accommodated highly conserved accommodated by alanine and in all the 100 sequences this residue is in helix. Then your own sequence you can also tell that this residue number 5 alanine that belongs to alpha helix with the, with the high confidence because it is highly conserved. So, this program depends on the sequence alignment if you get good alignment then your accuracy is high if the alignment is not very good then you have the dilemma in your assignment. So, then we use multiple sequence alignment then we discussed about the profiles pieces of matrices right and then they included all the aspects to predict the secondary structures. Then they started to use machine learning because all these things right depending upon the data sets right we need to manipulate the data right write the codes and they try to use different machine learning techniques for action neural networks or support vector machines and then see we put train all the known information with this machine learning techniques and to predict this secondary structures either helix or strand or coil. So, more details we will discuss in the next subsequent classes. Then during this course right they started to use join methods or a consensus method right this is easy to do, but also it relies on different servers different methods. In this case either they use for voting for example, if you got 10 methods available already because based on statistics or information or whatever right. So, different methods we are available then they run for 10 servers right and see the best for example, 7 methods predict a, 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 a residue as helix then you can say this residue belongs to alpha helix right. Just by voting procedure you can predict the secondary structures and you can evaluate. Second one is you can get the output from different servers and you can make a meta server it again run this output right to train this data to get this uh, prediction results for your sequence. So, current scenario they try to mix everything they try to include as much information as possible either from single sequence or the statistical preferences or the multiple sequence alignment the matrices right and put together in machine learning right to get the second structure prediction. Currently, they are using the deep learning right because it can handle large amount of data. So, in that case you can enhance the prediction performance. So, then we will discuss about the statistical methods the statistical methods first we need to have the preference of residues 
in any secondary structures either in helix or in strand. How to calculate the propensity? So, what is the meaning of propensity? Propensity of any amino acid for example alanine right that depends upon the preference of that that particular residue in any particular conformation. For example, if you take alanine or any residue I to be in any conformation for example, helix or strand right how to do it? First see the percentage of the residue I in that conformation compared with all the residues in the same conformation. So, you can see the propensity of I using the equation percentage of residue I in alpha helix now divided by the percentage of all residues in alpha helix. How to calculate the percentage of residues I in alpha helix? Number, Number of, of uh, ith residue in alpha helix divided by all residues. All the, res all the residues of type I for example, alanine 10 alanines right and 7 in alpha helix right what will be the percentage of residues in alpha helix? 70 percent right. So, then you can see that then normalize with the total number of all residues alpha helix the whole protein the 100 residues and 80 residues on alpha helix then how many residues on alpha helix 80 percent. Now, you compare so if you whole protein if 80 percent alpha helix and the preference is high only if it exceeds the number right because if it randomly distributed you can get 80 percent right then you can see whether it is underestimated or overestimated then that will introduce a bias and you can see some preference of these residues in alpha helix. You can see percentage of residues in alpha helix using this equation n alpha by n of i where this is the ith residue say alanine in alpha helix divided by ith residue in the whole protein. Then likewise you can the whole protein is n is the total number of residues n alpha is number of residues in alpha conformation. We will discuss with one example well, here first one is the sequence. And the second one is the secondary structure. So, you can see H is a helix, and you can see the G is 3 turn helix, right? And you can see T is a turn, and you can see some gaps. Gaps means you can say it is coil because that is not known, this is irregular shape, right? So, this is the S is the bend, right? And you can see uh, the different assignments using caption center, they, they use the DSSP. So, this is the result of the DSSP. Now, if you want to see the propensity for example, if you take this protein what is the propensity of alanine to be in alpha helix how to calculate. So, you can see the alanine alpha helix right this is number of alanine in alpha helix divided by number of alanine. So, see total number how many alanines here you can see all the alanines. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. There are sixteen alanine. Out of sixteen, how many of them are in alpha helix? If you see the red ones, they are fifteen. Okay, right. So this is not alpha helix, right? Others are alpha helix. So there are fifteen alpha helix. So you can get the numbers. There is zero point nine four. Then take the all the residues in alpha helix. In this case, you can see 153 residues, right? If you see here 50, 100, 150, 153. Out of 153, you can see 115 in alpha helix. So, that is 0 0.75, 75 percent of the residues in alpha helix. Now, if you see any residue to be preferred in alpha helix, that should be more than more than 1, that is more than 75 percent because the whole protein is 75 percent alpha helix, right? So, then you can get the propensity of alanine. So, 0 0.94 divided by 0 0.75, this is equal to 1.25. So, the value is more than 1 then you can say that this residue prefers to be in that particular secondary structure in this case for example, alpha helix. Then you take the glycine if you see the glycine how many glycines here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 or 10, 10 glycines right. So, finally, you can see this is the 0 0.5 the uh, percentage of glycine this is the percentage of glycine and this is the percentage of helices right this is 0 0.75. 0 so, divide this one they will get 0 0.66. So, in this case this is less than 1 so, from this what can we infer glycine is not preferred in alpha helix this we did based on just one protein. So, currently more than 130,000 proteins are uh, available in the protein data bank you can reduce redundancy 
right and from the non redundant set you can calculate the propensity then you can get a value for 20 different amino acid residues. Then how to derive how to get these numbers right if you want to derive these propensity values from the whole database right how to get the numbers what is how to write an algorithm to get these propensity values what are the input necessary the information do you need. So, we need the sequence right and the 20 different amino acid residues right and you need the secondary structure assignment you need the sequence and you need a secondary structure assignment right and for 20 different amino acids. First we need to get the occurrence of 20 residues in helix and we need the same occurrence in the full protein. So, full protein how many residues of a particular type or each type we can get and how about in helix then you can calculate the ratio this will give you a percentage of residues type i in helix and then the second step you take the total number of residues in helix and total number of residues in a protein that is n alpha by n right this will give you the percentage of residues in alpha helix then you divide this by this then you can get the propensity of all the 20 residues in helix you can repeat for all the the proteins and finally you can get the propensity values for example if you take the helix okay this is the propensity values this is the data obtained from chavan fassman if you see these numbers some of them are more than one some of them are less than one based on these numbers which residue is preferred to be in alpha helix glue alanine and leucine which residues is not preferred to be in alpha helix you can see proline glycine and so on okay this is the have high preference right so these residues are no preference right less preference then if you see the values some of them are very high values such as 1.5 1.45 and some of them are very low for example 0.5 or 0.6 and several residues they are oscillating around 1 right that also depends upon the data set. If you use 100 proteins you can derive the values if you use 1000 proteins or 10000 proteins right although there is not major difference but you can see a similar trend right maybe some minor changes hence they divide this group into 6 groups first one is capital H alpha this is strong helix farmer. So, because they have high tendency to form helix because the value is very high and they have the small h alpha right that is in this group. So, they have a tendency to form h alpha right to form the helix that is helix farmers. Then here just around 1 little bit around 1 here this is weak helix farmer then come down that is just a little bit less than 0. So, they make it as weak helix farmer helix breaker because it does not prefer to be in the uh, helix and you can see b alpha this helix breakers and capital B alpha there is a strong helix breaker. So, if you have the propensity based on the numbers they grouped into 6 groups strong helix farmer, helix farmer, weak helix farmer, weak helix breaker, helix breaker and strong helix breaker and you can use this information to predict the secondary structures. If you have any segment which contains mainly these residues then there is a high probability to be in helix if they have more residues which are in this category then it has less probability to be in alpha helix this for helix then we can do this for beta strand or coil or turn if we see the beta strand then here are the class 1 6 different groups and you can see the high values this is the strong beta farmers and these are the beta breakers and if you compare this p alpha and p beta some residues are distinct and some residues are same for example, proline right here it is not preferred in alpha helix also it is not preferred in beta strand. Glutamic acid it is a breaker in the case of beta right, but if it is a strong helix former in alpha. So, if you have a glutamic acid in a sequence then you can see there is a high tendency to be in alpha helix right. Likewise some different preference you can see the preference in beta but not in alpha. But some cases you can see similar preferences in both alpha helix and beta sheet this will give you a conflicting situation right the same segment can be predicted with the alpha as well as for the beta. In this case you can compare the values which one has high values then you can assign accordingly. So, how to 
predict the helical sequence or beta strands right from this uh, amino acid sequence. First you see the segment uh, the sequence and assign the propensity values because if you take this table there are 12 different groups for the strand helix 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 right for the beta also you have, uh, 6. So, you can take these preferences and assign the values then you can see the weightage for example, if it is helix. So, we take the different parameters for example, H alpha this is the helix former we take it as 1 and this is the weak helix former take it as 0 0.5 for example, this is the weak helix breaker they take it as 0 and this is helix breakers they put at minus 1 because we do not we have to give preference for the residues which have high preference to be in alpha helix. If it has no preference it has less preference take it as minus 1. Then you take the window residue of six residues which alpha is longer than the beta strands right. So, take the six minimum six residues and you can extend it and the idea is if you take any segment this segment have high preferred residues to be on alpha helix and less number of low preferred residues. So, at least four helix farmers and that should not be not more than one helix breaker. So, with this assumption they put a score of more than 4. In this case they will have high tendency to have at least 4 helix farmers because we take the value of 1 and not more than 1 helix breaker right. In this case you can have a score of 4. Then you can extend the directions for example, if you find if this is the sequence and you find okay, this is the helical segment and then you can extend and see whether the score is down or not. If the score is still more for example, the preferred preferred residues are present together then you can add up you can add up and then finally, you can add up to here to make the complete helix. So, now how to do this to continue the search and there are some conditions we can assign the terminals for example, you can see some residues which are mainly in the end terminal uh, some of them on the T C terminal and proline as we discussed is not present in the inner helix because it will form turns these are the some common observations this you can use for refinement if you have more uh, residues are predicted right if you want to refine it then you can use this information. So, now I give a sequence ok this is the amino acid sequence. So, now the question is which residues form alpha helix which residues belong to beta strand right first take the sequence and we take the overlapping residues of 6 residues. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, K V F G R C this is seg segment 1 and the second one go from here to here right V F G R C E and the third one is start from F 4, 5. So, likewise you can make different segments. Now, you take this one and see the score right instead of just writing the number just we just we check whether this is 1 or 0. So, for example, this is the table ok you can see this is 1 ok this you put 0.5 this is 0 this is minus 1. Take the first one k you take k this equal to lysine ok this equal to 0 0.5 ok lysine is here 0 0.5 right then v v is uh, here this is equal to 1 then f is here again phenylalanine so this is equal to 1 right and this g is in this group this is minus 1 so you put the minus 1 and r and c that is here r is here and c is here this is 0. You assign the values so just approximately assign this 2.5. So, this is less than or equal to 4 right this, this is not the part of helix. Go to the next segment here, right here these numbers are the same and the last one is e that is equal to 1 right in this case if you add this equal to 2, 2 or 3, 1, 2 this should be 1.5 right. 1 2 minus 1 1 this will be 1.5 right this 1.5 right this will be 2. Now, the third one if you see so you have this these are the same right these are the same here and the last one is L leucine this equal to 1 this equal to 2 again. Go on adding these numbers when you go with R C E L L A R equal to 0 C equal to 0 all these are 1 because E is 1 L is 1 and R L is 1. So, final score is 4. Now, you can say this is a segment you can identify as an alpha helix. Now, whether this only this residue is form on helix or you can extend it ok. Then if you take the last one m k r h it is here and then if you do it here. So, if you do this this 4.3 you can add right this is r c l l a r c l l a now this is 
next a if you add the a a is preferred one so it will be more than 4 right the next one is m so m is also preferred one this h, this is belongs to h alpha right m belongs to h alpha so that also we can increase it so next one is k so lysin so it is all 0 0.5 and if you add the values right this is then this will give you the value more than 4 you can extend up to this mk or h so the here you can add this m is equal to 1.2 right from here and k is 1.07 1.07 lies is in here and origin in 0 0.79 is 1.24 this value is 4.3 then add next one if add one more k r h g right you can see the last four one k r h g right if you add this then the number is down less than 4 so you cut here so now the segment starts from this lysine right you can start from here this one right you can right where it is 4 here it starts from r right you can start from here and up to here right this this is the segment which can form alpha helix so how to do this first what to do 6 s u windows you get the overlapping segments okay these are the 6 s u overlapping segments and then and, uh, theta is then get the assigned the values from this table we will do 6 different categories based on the tendency to form helix or they are not preferred to be in helix they have minus 1 to plus 1 just put the numbers assign the numbers and see whether this number is more than or equal to 4 if it is less go to next segment and go to next segment up until where we get the value of 4 right you get the value of 4 here so we can start from here then we this is 4 the question is if you add 1 that will have the high preference or low preference so add 1 and see the last 4 residues and whether the number is right you can see the segment the sixth segment is value is more than 4 so you can see the numbers right this 4.3 because you can get the numbers from this table here we just assign the numbers 1 or minus 1 0 0.5 just to see how many helix formers or how many helix breakers once we identify the segment then extend it based on the real values right so then we extend it until we get the value less than 4 here you can see the get the value less than 4 then we stop there right this is the complete segment you can get ok so this is assignment and actually they compare the experimental data it also ok it is up to here right this completely match with the experimental data this is a segment here we could not get any helix values are less and here we get the high preference and the segment is predicted as alpha helix right it matches with the experimental data now how to do the beta strand ok do the same procedures take the h beta uh, small h beta equal to 1 i beta equal to 0 0.5 small i beta equal to 0 and capital B beta or B beta equal to minus 1. So, here we use a scan of i residues and see a set a score of more than 3 because all beta strands are smaller than alpha helices. So, I take 5 residue segments right how they define these segments they tried with various segments and compare the results with the experiments and finally, which one matches they try to fix with that one this is how they assign 6 and 5 for the helices and strands. Then you can extend the length in both directions unless the average property is less than 1 right you can continue the regions and find the strand here at the same procedure you can adopt. So, I do not have to explain all these details right. So, here we have the values for p beta and you can assign the values and find out for example, if you find a conflict situation right same segment can be predicted as helix and can also be predicted as beta sheet in this case what to do. In this case get the segments and assign the real values and see which one is dominant if average propensity alpha helix is greater then this is alpha helix if beta strand is greater then it is beta strand. So, in the conflicting situation you can get the values and you can compare the numbers and then assign the secondary structure. So, here this is one observer there are several servers available to predict the secondary structure based on Chapasman parameters right here they use various programs and here we take the chow Boltzmann parameters and here we give the sequence in FASTA format it uses this uh, method the same 1974 chow Boltzmann, right and finally, you can see this region is the helix this is what we discussed now the predicted ones and then you can see this is a strand region and this is a turn region. So, finally, you can use this uh, server to predict the secondary structures based on chow Boltzmann methods. So, summarizing what did we discuss? Protein secondary structures. Protein secondary structures. What are the various secondary structures? 
Yeah. Alpha will is with a stand, right? It turns, right? And and coil, right? How are the second structures are formed? By hydrogen bonding. Many hydrogen bonds between backbone. Backbone NH and CO group. So let's see how the periodic arrangement of residues, right? So alpha helices are how alpha helices are formed? Hydrogen bond between I and I plus. I and I plus four. Different types of helices, right? And this is closely packed. If you compare to the alpha helices in beta sheets, right? This is closely packed and this is loosely packed. Beta sheet is loosely packed, right? Then how we obtain this Ramachandran plot? What is Ramachandran plot? A load and disallowed integer. Right, it's a plot connecting phi and psi, which tells you which rotations of phi and psi are allowed in different secondary structures, alpha helices and beta sheets, right? And which are allowed regions and the partially allowed regions, right? And the complete disallowed region, right? Fine. So now, how to assign the secondary structures? If you know the three D structures, Capstan Center developed a program. A called DSSP. DSSP. What is DSSP? Dictionary of, of secondary structure proteins. Right. They assign the secondary structures based on current bonding pattern. Right. They design the values. Right. Now the question is whether we can predict the secondary structures from the sequence. So all methods we discussed. Right. I will give the details in the next class. Right. So mainly we discussed in detail about Chow statistical Chow analysis. That is Chow Bassman method. Right. So how the Chow Bassman method works? Preference of residues. How do you get the preference? Propensity values. Propensity values, right? For any residue, how far that specific residue prefers to be in any secondary structure, either helix or strand. Based on that residue in helix, total number of residues, totally how many of type I, total number of res whole residues in the full protein, and how many residues in helix in a complete protein. So based on this information, you can get the propensity. Currently, one example of which residues prefer to be in alpha helix. Alanine, glutamic acid, or is preferred to be in alpha helix. Some residues which are not preferred to be alpha helix, for example, glycine, proline, right? They are not preferred, right? So, based on this information, how to predict the helical segments? Right, you take a window length, all of these six residues, right, and then classify these values in six groups and assign the numbers and see whether the number is more than four, right? We continue till we get the value four. Once you get the four, there could be a nucleus. Right, then extend the residues and see the last four residues have the actual value of more than four. Where is four? Add up. Where where it decreases, right, less than four, then you stop. Then you can identify this residue is an alpha helix. Likewise for beta strand, right, they use how many residues? Window five. five residue windows, right, and then can repeat the same procedure, right, to get the beta sheet. If there is a conflict situation, for example, same segment is predicted as both alpha helix and beta sheet. Right? How to do this? One with the greater. Average. The one with the greater one. Right? You can assign whether it is alpha helix have more propensity. Right? Then you can assign as alpha helix or beta strand vice versa. So we can predict this using uh, different uh, servers. Right? One example is you can see in this web server. Right? So you can just give the sequence and give you the secondary structure. Right? We discussed about the statistical methods. And next class, we will focus on the different other methods. For example, the information theory. Multiple sequence alignment, hydrophobicity profiles, the neural networks, right, like machine learning techniques, as well as the consensus, right, that we will discuss in the next class. Thank you very much.